Aquarina Springs is a fascinating place. Here at the edge of the Balcones Escarpment, where the Texas Hill Country meets the prairie, this hole in the earth releases millions of gallons of crystal clear water a day, forming the start of the San Marcos River and creating a truly one-of-a-kind place. If you're watching this video, you might have known Aquarina Springs as an amusement park, but this vital location has drawn people for thousands of years, and it has witnessed a multitude of visions since the first building was built here 175 years ago. In its life, it's been a watering hole, a mill, a hotel, an amusement park, and since it was taken over by Texas State, is slowly being returned to nature. But just which pieces of Ocarina Springs history are worthy of saving has been a complex and tumultuous issue, all culminating in its present condition as part historic hotel, part naturescape, and most prominently, half-demolished theme park. In the current and ongoing effort to restore Ocarina to nature, much of the park, including some of the most interesting architecture in the state, has already been torn down, and most of the rest is on its way out. Let's look at Ocarina Springs, its enthralling history, and the good and bad of progress in one of the most captivating places in Texas. To state the obvious, the idea of millions of gallons of clear, fresh, 72-degree water pouring out of the earth has been alluring since humans first arrived in Texas. Archaeological digs put evidence of human activity here as far back as 12,000 years, making it one of the oldest continually inhabited places in America. Its first exposure to Colonius is thought to have been in 1753 when Franciscan monks were traversing Spanish Texas. The spring served as an important stop on the old San Antonio Road, a Spanish-era path traversing east-west across the state, and later the Chisholm Trail, a north-south cattle drive trail developed after the Civil War. And the springs themselves are worth talking about. The over 200 springs, which outflow from the extensive Edwards Aquifer, bubble up from underneath the ground into sand and pebbles in a crystal clear lagoon, while kelp sway in the water with fish darting through the forests. In fact, there are several entire species of water animal that only exist in Aquarina Springs, and in recorded history, the springs have never once gone dry. Disclaimer here, I'm calling it Aquarina Springs, but its actual name is San Marcos Springs, not obtaining the Aquarina name until the theme park in 1951. The first notable owner of the land was Edward Burleson, who had been the vice president of the short-lived Republic of Texas. In 1849, Four years after Texas joined the Union, he built a dam and a water-powered mill. Although the lake here is natural in some form, the current size was created by the construction of Burleson's Dam, which still holds water in Spring Lake today. The opportunity the site presented was not lost on others, however. San Marcos businessman A.B. Rogers purchased the land in 1926 and within two years was developing a hotel at the upstream end of the lake, opening as the Rogers Spring Lake Park Hotel. His ambition, however, was impeded six months after opening with the stock market crash of 1929 and the subsequent Great Depression, bringing tourism to a standstill. He managed, however, to ride it out by leasing the entire hotel first as a sanitarium and later a training school, the latter of which his lease didn't end until 1960. As the Depression waned and the hotel was still in the lease, Rogers came about an idea via his son. Bring glass bottom boats, similar to ones they had seen on a trip to California, to the lake, giving anyone a diver's view of the underwater life. Rogers' first glass bottom boat prototype launched in 1947, and the success of it led his son Paul to take over the park with even grander sights. He bought the land around the lake from his parents in 1949 and turned up the dial on the possibilities of Aquarina Springs. Paul Rogers started introducing amusement-style attractions at the springs, including an underwater submarine theater and grotto stage, a sky ride crossing the lagoon, the 200-foot sky spiral tower, and numerous themed sections of buildings and landscapes. There was a mini Texas town called Texana Village, a fake gristmill, a fake Spanish mission, and an expansive entry gift shop restaurant building along the parking lot. Even Edward Burleson's original cabin that had been destroyed by a storm in 1917 was rebuilt at Aquarina in 1964, employing parts from the original building. At the peak of the park, it's estimated 350,000 people a year visited, and Rogers had redefined Aquarina Springs in the minds of the world. The underwater act seemed to be the most ingrained in the minds of the visitors. There was Ralph the Swimming Pig, who would perform tricks for treats, and Aquamaids who would perform skits underwater. Although the emphasis was on the rides and shows, 
The springs themselves were always a key part of the attraction, with the glass bottom boats continuing operation throughout the lifespan of the park and even into the modern environmentalist era. Aquarina began a slow decline seemingly starting in the late 70s. In 1979, just 20 minutes south on I-35, the first Schlitterbahn water park opened, and within 15 years of that, Six Flags and SeaWorld opened in San Antonio. Rogers sold the property in 1985 to a trust that continued operation before they finally sold it to Texas State, then called Southwest Texas, who shortly after purchasing in 1994 started closing the rides. And that was just the beginning. Aquarina Springs was redubbed the Aquarina Center, and then later the Meadows Center for Water and the Environment. Starting in 2011, the center advanced its plan to return the springs to a natural environment, year by year removing more pieces of the old theme park. The iconic Metal Flower Cup Skyride Station was removed that year, and transported by helicopter to the artist's family ranch. The Underwater Theater, Skyride Lines, and Sky Spiral Tower were removed in 2012. From the entry side today, there's little evidence there was ever a theme park here at all. The Army Corps of Engineers is set to continue dismantling the remainder of the amusements, but as of right now, the Sky Spiral Slab, the Spanish Mission, and the Viewing Deck all remain, albeit in a decrepit state. The west side of the lake is closed due to flood damage right now, and drone photography is not allowed within the park's bounds, so unfortunately, this is as close as I can legally get. On the positive side, the hotel, which abuts in Bulkhead Spring Lake, is a historic landmark and will not be torn down. It was restored as part of the Meadows Center construction and is now being used as part of their research facility. Now, I think it's great that the springs are being addressed from an environmental perspective. This is a unique place with animals and plants worth protecting. But a lot of great objects were lost here that didn't need to be. Aquarina Springs was never going to be a successful theme park again, but the fact that almost none of the most identifiable parts of the site's life remain is a huge defeat. I grew up going to Aquarina Springs. I distinctly remember walking the trail through the abandoned rides, sitting in the teacup station, shopping in the gift shop. I wish I had recorded this video when I was 10. Even the replica of Burleson's cabin wasn't deemed worthy of saving, and slowly fell apart before burning down in 2006. This is a place you need to see before it's totally gone, and that day is just around the corner. If enough people are interested, I'll try and get permission to film in the closed part of the park where most of the rides are. If you have any stories about Ocarina, please share in the comments. As always, thanks for coming with me on this adventure. Subscribe to the channel and join me on the next one.